All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to a podcast Odyssey. Today I've got Cyber, True Knowledge, and Renee, aka Loki's mom. Uh, she's been on the show before. Cyber and True Knowledge have always been with me since the last couple of Mondays, probably about a month straight, right? At least two months now. It feels like it's we been. We are we are root. I feel like it's been two months. Okay, well. Anyway, today we are going to be talking about a really, really good movie, uh, actually a favorite of mine, called Interstellar, and I think everybody got to watch it before we did the podcast, right, guys? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, so now now he wants to let me know that this is one of his favorites. He didn't want to let he didn't want to say anything about that to me when I brought it up last week. Did I? I thought I meant I may not have said it, but I did oh, say it was a really good movie. I did. Ah, all right. It is. It is a, a one of one of my favorite movies that I enjoyed before I started. I uh, I told Cyber the same thing that I enjoy movies that are uh, as well science fiction movies in general. Just anything about space, time travel, too. aliens. Renee, that's all Renee shit too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, those are, those are my thing. You know, those are the movies I love. I actually saw it uh, the day it came out. Saw it the day it wow. came out. You are lucky then, sir, because I did not see it in theater. That uh, this, uh, unfortunately, that was this was still during like my first life when I had a career in custody of my of my daughter and everything and whatnot. I was a busy guy. I didn't go to the movies very much. Um, but um, I wish I would have saw it in the theater. You're very lucky. I'm envious of you to you, and that's awesome that you really enjoy the movie that much because I do too. So it's nice to know that my friend Jay Rent Two Thousand feels the same way I do about Interstellar. Absolutely. Um... Guys, Cyber, tell me, tell me about what what you like about it. Like, I like mostly about this film. I like the concept. I thought the whole concept was really interesting. You know, world basically dying, uh, just like a lot of sci-fi films. I really enjoy. This has a really great story, of, you know, about that and. Uh, I, the visuals of this film were so well done, and I think that's one of the reasons that really caught my eye when I saw the trailer for the first time, is the fact that the visuals were just so extensively done, and Nolan is always good about bringing that kind of great quality to his films, so I think that's, that's really the biggest reason uh, I liked this film in any form or aspect. For sure, without a doubt. Renee, uh, some of the basics that I guess that I would I would say that you like about the movie. Um. Oh, it's um, it's 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 like uh, Cyber says. It's real. It's hard science fiction. I mean, Nolan. He really, uh, you know, puts a lot of effort and research and everything. And anything he does, you know, with these types of movies, and um, not quite as mind bendy as some of his other movies. I think this one's more more grounded. Um, for the most part. Yeah, it's it pretty much pretty much it's, it's 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 a in a lot of ways it's a family drama that's set within this outer space, uh, uh, whatever it is going to another. Actually, I think they're going to another galaxy. I think the wormhole goes into another galaxy, which is way 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 far away from where we're at, as opposed to say like the next star, which is like a thousand light years away or something like that. But anyway, yeah, I think that I think just just. We don't see a lot of hard science fiction now. It's a lot of we see a lot more fantasy and a lot more um, just action, uh, superhero that type of uh, film. So just to get to see a movie that that does dwell more on the science side of it, and, and yeah. something that's that's a lot of it's you know sort of possible. You know, building space stations and building those habitat things like that, and going to say and maybe the possibility of the, that there's a wormhole out there somewhere, because I think it is in science. I think they call it Einstein Rosenbridge, that it's something they theorized many, many decades ago. And, and now we're sort of realizing in the science has sort of uh, mainstream science has sort of caught up to these theorists and, and, and we're seeing the possibilities of, and you know, just what I think even before this movie was, I mean, this movie was made before they actually, if it wasn't kept where it was another, space telescope that um picked uh got a photo or got a, an image of some kind of a black hole which i think is interesting so yeah they're out there 
not that long ago, and I can remember when they, they didn't know if black holes were real or not, and now we do know that, yes, they are real. <laughs> Jeff, you still with us? Yeah, sir, I'm here. Are you on, He's looking up black holes. Are you on YouTube right now? No, no, I was pulling up the uh, show. Oh, I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I got in the habit of doing that from, based off of you and, um, and Liz and whatnot. Like, you know, now I do it all the time. If, uh, I just pull up the if I were to ask you to uh, tell us what the movie is about from beginning to end in a sure. small small oh, phrase right now, could you do that? Yeah, can I real can quick? Can you do that in like, briefly? like 30 seconds? Tell me what the movie's can. about. Can, but can you really, can you give me just one second just to briefly to say what I like about the film and why I enjoy it real quick? Because I just oh, wanted I really, to bounce up. Didn't you say that? Weren't you the first one? Well, well, Sort of, real, just real quick. Yes. I just wanted to bounce off, back off Renee, in that we we could we could work, we have plenty of time to talk about the film and the genre and all that and whatnot. And, you know why we really enjoy certain scenes. But for me, even though this is an older film from 2014, it is nice to watch a film that's really good like this, a really high quality film that's something I really enjoy and find to be like challenging and impressive. And like, is this from epic 2014? And, yeah. Jesus um, Christ. And, and yeah. Break up this, and, and honestly, break up to some of this um, monotony with the MCU dominating like the entire film industry. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not sick of the MCU or Marvel, but at the same time, as a in general, somebody who likes movies and quality movies and likes other stuff other than the MCU and Marvel, it would be, it'd be it's nice to see some films that are actually solid and like you know legitimate films that are fun and entertaining that are different. Um, even if it is an older film, I guess right. So. Um, if anything, um, I think Interstellar is, one of those, Interstellar is one of those ones where it doesn't matter how many times you put it in and watch it, it's always kind of enjoyable, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So now, as far there's, as a lot, there's a lot to it, and there's a lot. Yeah. It's one of those movies that when you see it the second, third, or even fourth time, you find something new in it. So there's definitely a movie. It's definitely a different class, you know, from the superheroes. You know, I, I don't even want to bring those up because this is a whole different genre different type of movie if you want to bring up movies that are comparable to it let's talk about like 2001 space odyssey mm -hmm. uh let, let's talk about a, a time travel movie you know because this is, has some type of time travel you know scenario in it um it's this not movie aliens. Has so many elements. jay Rand, this movie has so many different elements in it that it's almost it's almost hard to quantify what's going on john yeah, I mean, there, 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 there is some research that went into this movie, you know, for the, for the example oh, wow. with the black hole and, and talking mm -hmm. about time and space and the idea, the idea of how, how, how it would work and, you know, so there's a lot of sciencey stuff in it. Um, they wanted to be the, um, the, the Nolan brothers wanted it to be authentic. They did not want to be, they didn't want to fake the shit. They wanted, they, they wanted to not be as fake as possible. If they could try to, you know, have what, if they're, the premise of the film could be a, as authentic as possible, they wanted it to be. So they made an effort to reach out to acclaimed scientists. Right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. For their theories and their visions and whatnot, I guess it's the right way to say it. But you mm -hmm. want me to basically like summarize the film in 30 seconds? Well, it's very simple. Um, the Earth is dying. Right. Yep. The Earth is essentially dying. It's not habitable anymore for the human race. They cannot survive there. Um, you know, um, uh, Coop, uh, the astronaut slash farmer slash dad of Murph, um, is brought in by like what's left of NASA and, you know, to lead this mission uh, essentially to like save the human race. Um, and, um, you know, as that plays out across the span of the film, there's some, you know, ups and downs and whatnot and everything. And there's some discoveries of some different things that they weren't, you know, aware of before they set out for the plan. And um, it ends up wrapping up into a situation where um, things that occurred in the beginning of the film between father and daughter, Murph and, um, and Coop and whatnot, ended up becoming like tied into the end. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Directly to where, um, you know, essentially um, there's almost like a, 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 it's almost hard to explain the ending, but basically the ending ends up, you know, playing out to where, um, you know, Coop goes into the unknown, you know what I mean? You know, dives into the black hole, gargantuan or whatever, whatnot, or whatever it is, and essentially um, 
goes back in time and space or whatever and whatnot and ends up solving the human the crisis on earth through work through like communicating through time and space i see yeah so so you kind of going into some details the basic uh, the the movie is basically earth is dying like you said and they are sending travelers into this black hole to find a new planet to colonize to live yeah and uh, there is some you know drama that happens between that that um <clears throat> i guess the part of that story and it's up to us to watch the movie to see if they save humanity because earth is dying that's the whole thing earth is dying and uh cyber question for you let me ask yes, you yes sir so what is in the movie you know we we got to see that intro we got to see like they did that little um opening where it was like a history channel of the people talking about like the almost like the dust bowl type of scenario where the 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 bowl was on the plates and they did a they like an inter interesting opening with that um and then we we also see um we also see him as an astronaut in the stratosphere passing out i guess part of like um what happened to him when he was in space yep right what was uh what was destroying the planet it had something to do with the uh the oxygen the blight the blight is that what it was it was the blight right the blight. yes yeah everything was whatever it was it infected all all organic plant life Correct, correct. All, all, all the plant life. Thanks, Cyber. Appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, Renee, I'll ask, I'll ask you this. Um, <clears throat> what did you think of that scene where, um, I mean, he's got a really intelligent daughter. It was kind of interesting how they did it with like the school system, the structure was set up. Like it's either like you're smart and you become a scientist or you're average and you're yeah. just a farmer. Mm hmm. That was a, what did you think of that concept that they did there? Yeah, I thought it was interesting that because we're looking at it, what what we would call a dystopian future. Um, yes. There's, uh, obviously, I think there's he makes mention Conahan makes or uh, Coop makes mention of when he was a child they were like there was a lot more starvation or something. So that maybe there was a cataclysm of some kind, a war, who knows what it was? It, they don't really say. But um, the Earth kind of settled down a little bit at this point when we joined the story. But even so, it's it's there's not a lot of people left, not a lot of resources left. There's no money left. I mean, what who's who's buying anything? It's you grow corn and that's it. So I mean, education is at that point pragmatic. You know, he didn't make the scores. We need people who can take us. Do the NASA project, do or figure out how we're going to, you know, cure the blight. We need to train those, the smartest people we can for that, our resources on that, rather than someone who might not do it. And the kid sort of, I guess he takes it okay. I don't think he, it really doesn't go in there. And it was a young Timothy Chalamet, I'd point out. Yes. Yeah, first, Timothy first, Chalamet, right there. He, yeah, he was, Mr. Uh, from no. June, uh, Paul uh Anyway, uh, oh yeah. But then she benches the, but then the teacher she, and then he gets really upset when she. Well, we're we're teaching now that the, the moon was a hoax because we don't want to, you know. Of course, apparently she believes that it was a hoax too because or whatever because they don't want to give people hope or so. I, I don't exactly know why they. No, why they put I don't that think. I no, it she did. Weird insertion, but yeah. Uh, it well. It wasn't her that didn't believe that the the moon landing was faked. It was the um, it was the system. it was the school systems yeah. uh, teaching the kids that that was a, a hoax for propaganda. Um, yeah, <clears throat> and it's kind of funny because then he gets mad. You know, he goes to the school and he mentions that some of the machines created by NASA, what if they would have been available, they could have saved his wife's life and. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah they go to that yankees game and they see average players they don't have they don't have like hot dogs they have to eat popcorn because that's all that's left uh, and then uh what was it was like the blight right that was like almost like a dust bowl type scenario that they keep giving to us you know what had caused it in reality j rat the blight was caused by um that r being run by the democratic party for so long like that's what ended up happening like <laughs> For some reason, people kept voting Democrat over and over again, and we ended up with a bunch of douchebags, and that that brought the blight. 
Wow, I didn't know that, Jeff. Well, well, that's real interesting, Jeff. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah Actually, it makes a lot of sense. About going back to the dust club and, and, and the little vignettes, the little, the little um, history things. At that's actually those were drawn directly from Ken Burns' documentary called The Dust Bowl, um, with the exception of Ellen Burstyn, who's one of the talking heads we see at the beginning. All those other people were are actual people who were interviewed who had lived through the Dust Bowl era. And um, if you ever get a chance to see the Dust Bowl, I guess it's probably on PBS. Or That's you can pull it up somewhere. But but yeah, I mean those are the he actually. I'm assuming he partnered with Ken Burns and got the cuts, but that those are real people talking about that. that what'd you uh, think of that, Jay Rat? What'd you think of that whole thing, Jay Rat? Did you what did you think of that opening like that that they went in that direction? I thought I it was it. really interesting. Yeah, no, I loved it. And you know what? It told me Dust Bowl without having to tell me Dust Bowl because that information mm -hmm. that Renee just gave me, I didn't know that. I thought these were just actors for the film, but if that's mm -hmm. real, those are real yeah. clips from real people who live through that. That's amazing. You know, yeah, I had actually seen the documentary before I saw this. I'd probably come out a couple of years before on television. And when I saw that in the movie, I was like, bam. I mean, it was like, I knew exactly where it, where it was coming from. So, yeah, very interesting to I am. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what did you guys think, uh, I asked with you, Cyber, um, about gravity leading them to NASA? Gravity leading them to NASA. Remember the ghost uh, in our bedroom? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I thought that was okay. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of that. I, you know, they start off with all that, you know, true knowledge, you know, going on <laughs> the beginning of it with, you know, the Dust Bowl and everything like that. Just, you know, just, yeah, true, like true knowledge. And, uh, you know, then they go to this whole, like, that kind of like ghost aspect and i was kind of like eh, you know some people believe in it some people don't i mean if you want to keep it as accurate i get it if you don't want to keep it accurate you put in the ghost i get that and to give it a little more flavor as i like to call it and uh i i you know i thought it was okay it wasn't my favorite part of the film uh but definitely it you know it added to the story and overall it wasn't bad it wasn't super bad it just i just wasn't really into it you didn't like how it led them. It led them to the um, to NASA. And when he got there, they were like, "How did you find us? Nobody finds NASA." Type scenario. Hey, yeah, I mean, I mean, okay, I, I see what you're saying, Renee. What do you think mm -hmm. about uh, about the scene or about? I guess the how idea they of gravity. I guess the I guess the scene and the uh, the idea of well. Okay, let's just kind of zoom out and look at it this way. So that scene is important because it was him after he went into the black hole, and that's how he was reaching his daughter. So I guess that scene is very important. Yeah, well, what what I got from it, um, and if you probably hear it through the, throughout the movie, and they talk about it inside Gargantua, the singularity, mm -hmm. and that's... Yeah. that's that's the, a singularity is from my understanding what I've, and I've read pop science. I'm not, I'm not a physicist or anything like that, but I've read enough of the side books, you know, Carl Sagan type stuff and watch the TV show. Heck yeah. Um, <laughs> love those shows. Um, a singularity is, um, when all gravity is collapsed into a single point. So all space time. So great. So if gravity um, and space time are um, affect each other, and are kind of like a Morbius strip type. Um, if you kind of think of it that way, um, on either side of each other. But as it, as it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, and the, gra and the gravity itself just pulls everything right into it to where it becomes almost nothing. And the interesting thing about that is that, um, and this is what um, Stephen Hawking, if you've ever seen his documentary, anything like that. He talks about a lot, and that was that. Well, if you think of a singularity as, as Big Bang as a singularity, if you could shrink it all the way back, and gravity and all gravity and all space time is all now one at one point. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, and I'll make an allusion to Marvel Comics because they deal with it by calling it the quantum realm. 
Um, I think we maybe can relate to that a little bit more. That's what I think they're talking about there in a, in a literary way, in a science sci-fi, sci-fi literary way, that time and everything is right then at that singularity. So what made it possible? Once Coop went into the singularity, he and, and Tars went into singularity, he was able to, um, through his own memories, connect inside that what was called a ta- what they called the Tesseract. The Tesseract. And then he was able at that point, his time was shrunk down to where he was actually able to connect with the time that um, his daughter, what was, I'm sorry, what's her name again? Um, Murph. Murph. I'm sorry, what was that? Murph. Murph. Murph, Murph, I, well, how in the world could I forget that, Murph? Murph. <laughs> Murphy's Law. Murph. Murphy's Law. Anyway, yeah, Murphy's Law. Um, where he's able to actually connect with Murph when she's actually uh, thinking in the same terms. She's trying to create. So that's the ghost. That's the ghost in the system is actually, um, we can think of it as, if you want to spread, go out into a, a cultural tribal way, this is how they would communicate with their spirits because they're going, they're traveling in astrally projecting themselves into that space time singularity where all, where everything has already happened, is happening and will happen at one time. And you can go and pinpoint what you want to focus on and go there. So in some ways that's the time travel sort of bendy idea to it. And I hope I didn't blow everybody's mind on that. (laughs) Jeff, follow that up. Yeah, Jeff, please well, I mean, explain that. <laughs> I wanna, if, I, if, if, that, if I can, if I can make that work for myself, I'd like to pinpoint the time in history when I almost hit like a couple of chicks back in the day, but I, I felt bad it didn't. And I would go back, and I would smash that shit no matter what. Yeah, well, it, we instead of sand, it would be something else, be dripping from the ceiling. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, I would, I would remind my young self, stop being such a white knight and crush that shit. <laughs> Jeff, you a white knight? Back when I was like 13, 14 years old, I was like scared to have sex and like all that and whatnot. And I was like, you know, too, eth- I guess I was overly ethical, you know. You've been, you've been having sex probably since you, since you've been able to give it up probably. Well, 13 is when I started, yeah. But like, you know, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But Jeff, your, yes. shiv- your chivalry when you were a teenager has nothing to do with interstellar. No, it doesn't. It's no, you know that. Uh, but I think it had to do with the Dark Knight idea that Chris <laughs> <laughs> no one directed that. <laughs> no, so but, um, that uh, white unless you're in. unless you're the but Joker. You know what, a, what a, another white knight? You know. <laughs> the um the the actress that plays the young Murph is really good in this movie. She's very great. Good. Yeah, she's very outstanding. Good. She's a very good act. Um, little actress. Her name is Mackenzie something. Um, Mackenzie, Mackenzie, Boy. Mackenzie Foy. She looks like a Mackenzie. Yeah, well, she's probably Ellen, she's a grown woman now. So, yeah, yeah. And then Ellen Burstyn is the elderly Murph, and then Jessica Chastain is the Murph. scientist. Murph. Let's not forget about the music in this movie. Oh, Hans Zimmer, baby. He just, I mean, knocks it out of the park, and it just makes every scene so intense too i mean mm-hmm. just like yeah. it's exciting just yeah, i'm trying to bring using, it he's using that woolets i don't know if it's a woolets or what type of organ but i mean it's probably a real pipe organ that he's going to and using mm-hmm. pulling that that's crescendo it and it's and it's an allusion to um he's a musical those allusion church, to, those, to yeah. 2001 you're they right used a lot of organ it is there's a it's pipe organs for sure i saw a uh Sometimes I want to say it's a documentary. Maybe it's a documentary too that I see. Maybe we saw, saw the same one. I don't know, but they showed them making the music to this, and psh, I mean, just amazing. Just, I'm yeah. trying to hire Hans right now to do the soundtrack for some of my private movies, my private videos. <laughs> I don't think he does like 25 second songs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> Boy, um, Jay right um, shots. Yeah, that's all we need. You're, right. you're, you're crushing me with that shit, man. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. I'm you sure you can go all night, dude. I'm sure you're just a fucking, fucking animal. Just 
No, nah, no, nah, you know what? Uh, believe it or not, I actually experienced legit erectile dysfunction the other night. Could not and could not. Um... Okay, guys, let's talk about that. <laughs> no, it, so it, it even it even happens to true knowledge, baby. We I, even <laughs> I experienced. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. You know what? Let me go. To, let me go. To, let me go to the man over here, right next to me, Cyber. All right. So <clears throat> we've got to the part where they're in space. Uh, I mean, we might have skipped a few steps, but uh, when they're in space, you know, and they're uh, floating aimlessly, and they're going on their journey, and then they make it. You know, they go past, I think it was past Saturn is where the, the black hole was at. They finally get there. And when they go through that black hole or that, that uh, time warp or whatever it was, uh, um, what did you think of that scene? Like, just the visuals. Like, when they, you know, they started warping them through and they did that whole, like, everything, stars passing them by. Like, just that. That was super visually awesome. Uh, it was so well done. And it was just a cool, like, representation of what it could really be like if we actually were able to travel through black holes. Now, this black hole, they happened to call Gargantua. And when they went through Gargantua, it was, it just was, it was beautiful. It, like, imagine if you're, like, sitting, you know, like, laying, or laying down or something. And, like, when you close your eyes and if you put your your hands over your eyes sometimes like as a kid i would do that and i could see like different like shapes and stuff like that mm -hmm. or like spots and stuff like that and uh i don't know that's, if that's good what for your it eyes be. it could it could be it could be who knows it could be a, <laughs> it could be a brain thing i don't know but i just remember it happening when i was you know tried it out when i was younger and i did uh, too i did too and so that that visualization is what this going through this wormhole was like for me. It like brought back those memories and I, how visually pleasing it was. That's what it made me think of. Like it felt like reality. Like this was, I was really going through a black hole. It was just beautifully done. And I thought they did a really good job with that. And that was made the film very entertaining. Yeah. Without a doubt. Renee, what did you think about that scene? Yeah, I've, we've seen them before, you know. I think um, Contact has the um, another great movie, kind of heart, what we call heart, maybe heart with my McConaughey in it, by the way. Um, all right, all right, where all right. They go, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Where he goes into the, where um, um, Jodie Foster falls into whatever, and, and with the with the machine that they built and that the aliens had sent to them from you know Vega, wherever wherever it was at. What movie is this again? What are you, which one? I'm sorry. I, I think you said it, but I was looking at Jeff. I'm sorry. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, but yeah, the whole the way they did it in this film, I mean, you know, I, I, who knows what a wormhole would look like. And at that point, you know, it's, it's up to the, the creative um, talents of the directors and art directors and uh, special effects people. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. It was, I'll hear the side, you know, it was like, you know, I would do the same thing as a kid, you know, kind of poke your eyes on little different places and get little lights. And then if you take your hands away and then watch how the, <laughs> whatever it is in your eyeballs, <laughs> your brain that's going swirling around. And you kind of, oh, yeah. So so absolutely. Yeah. And then when they hit hit the um, singularity, they hit Gargantua, because from my understanding that the wormhole is an extension from Gargantua from that from that faraway galaxy that has landed right at right outside of Saturn or right beside Saturn. So they are able to go into that and then they go to Gargantua and then they're able to skirt around the side of it so that that way they, they won't get sucked into the black hole themselves. And Gargant apparently they, yeah, apparently, and we've, we should mention that there was a mission, several missions had already been sent into it. And those were the man and Miller and um, I forget what several of the other ones that had, they had managed to get some enough information back out that they knew that they had landed, but they don't know what happened to you're them. You're right. So that's you're right. what they're going to. You're right. To we missed a very important. Happened. We missed a very important information on that movie. the The original missions was there. There was the the Lazarus missions, right? The Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. The yep. Lazarus missions were the ones to first go through those to find the different star systems that had the habitable planets, and then and the uh, <clears throat> and then. Lazarus had to, that's where he was like, um, 
Laz- he was like, didn't Lazarus die? And and then he was like, yeah, but he came back alive. But he he re- he was resurrected. And he came back and it's like, yeah, but he had to die in the first place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that, that, I, that's one of my favorite like little quote scenes from that. But uh, they went out and Doctor Man, and I forgot some of the other ones where they found a galaxy that was had three planets that were possible uh, hospitable places, right? If I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, inhabitable, possible, inhabitable, possible, yeah, in, yeah, inhabitable planets. That's what it was, inhabitable. Okay. Uh, Jeff, do you remember the name of the uh, the new missions that they were sent out when they had the container when they were taken off? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think it was um, Endurance was the name of the spaceship. That it was they Endurance. Died yeah, out okay. Of the shuttle. Correct. But no, but was Endurance the actual name of the actual mission too? Well, I think yeah, it was the Endurance. Yeah, they were on the Endurance because uh, I believe right is that um, Cyber? Name, and, and endurance is the space is the spaceship that they dock to they when they shuttle to it when they first launch Earth. Like yes, endurance what, is the name of the is the spaceship. That's not the name of the mission. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm getting confused. Was there a name of the mission from this one? I'm looking. I feel like it was, like it was the endurance, but I'm looking. Jeff, Google it. Either way, we'll move on to the next part while you look that up, Jeff. Um, <clears throat> one of the scenes that I liked, I'll ask you about somewhere around there. When, when um, You know when they, the the gentleman, he has like he kind of has a headache or he has some anxiety? And Matthew McConaughey puts those headphones on him and it's just the, the thunderstorm? And then they give you that beautiful like visual of like space but with like the rain and the thunderstorm? Do y'all remember that part? I, I don't mean, remember that. That's weird. Yeah, so there's a part on there where he, he's having some anxiety. And he, he was like, here, you know, these are familiar sounds to you because I guess they've already been months in space. And so he puts the headphones on him, and it's the sound of, like, rain, like rainforest, rain, and thunderstorm. And then they give you this beautiful, like, picture of just outer, like, in the black outer space with, like, Saturn in the background with like rain and thunderstorm mm-hmm. and it's just quiet like it, it's just a very interesting sound with the image that are not connected but like with them put together it was great you should if you haven't seen it you just gotta look up that part and you'll see it It was well done just for a small part it was well done yeah sometimes a little, little moments like that are special in movies you know Absolutely, for sure. What's going on, Joel? Welcome. I see you lurking. Joey, the whole thing is called endurance. You're right. It was right. The, okay. The, the entire thing is called endurance. The, the endurance. plan, the mission, the spaceship is all the endurance. That's what I thought. I'm just remembering that from the um, <clears throat> when when they find him at the like fast forwarding it, they find him at the end, and they have the uh, in the ship. They have the uh, where it shows the Lazarus missions, and then it shows the endurance, like at the bottom. Or somewhere at the end of the movie where they showed those um those parts. What did you think when when they finally got to that that solar system and they went to that one planet where every thirty minutes was seven years? Is that right? It was every thirty minutes was seven years. That was, that was Miller's planet. It was the all water planet. Yeah, that had the huge tides on it and whatnot and everything. And um, yes, it was twenty three years, right, or something like that per hour. Um, seven, seven years per hour. Seven years. Seven per hour. Years. That's what it was. Yeah, it was twenty-three hours that passed. Yeah, so the they were down a couple day. hours. Yeah. Yeah. What did um, Renee? What did you think of that concept of the idea of like they were? He was. I mean, he was literally orbiting the planet, but they were sent down there, and the fact that time was just so different down there. Like, I mean, what did you think of that idea? Wasn't that like just mind, kind of mind blowing? It is mind blowing. And, you know, it's a very, very real thing. Um, uh, this was part of Einstein's special relativity that we now have it has since been proven that 
the further out you are, um, or the closer into to a gravitational body you are, the slower time runs. The further out you are, the slower time. They have done with these highly precise clocks that they have now. I mean, they can get it down to just like atomic. The, the, you talking the, about atomic? Yeah, clocks? atomic clock. What? Just my the smallest units they can measure. Um, people that are orbiting are actually, if you're in an airplane or if you're in a tower, uh, 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 several stories above somebody, time is actually going a little faster, I believe, or maybe it's a little slower for you. But anyway, um, the two astronauts that are twins, they sent one of them, um, I've forgotten their, um, golly, I can't think of their names right now, but uh, one became a senator and one is still an astronaut. And he, the one who, who's not a senator, he went up on the space station for like a year. And then they measured um, using a, these atomic clocks, both war at the same time. The, it's, it's only just like with a few seconds, but he is now, there's that much difference in their age, you know. Yeah, it's what like it was seconds, originally. seconds and difference. Mm-hmm. I think they so do the same thing with like a speed. Yeah. Like if you, yeah. like one person's like standing still, another person's on like a, a train going 500 miles per hour or something crazy mm-hmm. speed, and then when they beat back up, the time's slightly different. Well, the faster you're going, the the the, the, the faster you're going, the more you can um, diminish gravity. See, because we keep going back to this idea of gravity. So what's happening when they go down on that planet? Because that particular water planet is closer to the singularity where all gravity is being sucked in, it's making the time run much faster for, for the guy, or, or let's put it this way, those three hours is going to be the 23 years out in um, out in orbit where, where the Endeavor is at. See what I'm saying? That's, the, that's how great that gravity is that it can that it can distort, it's called time dilation, that it can delay time that much. We're, we're on Earth, it's just going out now, it's going to the moon, it's only going to do it just a few seconds. But anyway. Yeah. So yeah, very mind-blowing, very mind-blowing. And that was, like I said, that was one of Einstein's, that was his special relativity that he, um, famous papers when he wrote three, three landmark papers in physics and quantum mechanics back in 1905, I believe. Oh, wow. Cyber. During that, during that time on that scene... What were your some some of your thoughts on that? On the Aqua Planet scene? Mm-hmm. On Aquaman's planet. <laughs> I said Aqua Planet, sir, but anyways. Oh. Uh that was a very interesting sequence because there was so much that went on in that whole entire sequence. But at the same time, I found it kind of boring. And it just it, it, like t- when watching it, sitting there, I was watching it. I, I didn't have a chance to see this in theaters either. I saw it on uh, either streaming or I rented it. I can't remember exactly. But uh, I just remember thinking that there was a lot of good like dialogue that was going on, but at the same time, I just found it so boring. And I thought there could have been a little bit more action and stuff like that. Yes, on the water planet. So you don't remember him watching riding that riding the wave, that huge bongus wave in the spaceship like it's like they're on a surfboard? Yeah, I remember that. I, that, okay. I found that boring. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> and uh and I just thought that it could have been a lot more. I mean, I just think that there could have been a little bit more action sequence. Like as we go after we get past the sequence, there's so much that the what? Oh, he froze oh, up. You froze. He's like, Look, he's like, ah. I think I think he ever got stuck in like the in Gargantua. Or whatever. He's got he stuck got st- into a black hole. He got stuck in yeah. time. Oh yeah. man, he was just about to get to the good stuff too. This is a this would be a perfect. Anyway, I love this. I love that that humongous wave. And it froze on you, good man. It got you real <laughs> good. Is. Yep. Oh well. No, say it again. How, Go. how was the trip? How was the trip? It was a good trip. The uh, internet guys got you real good right now. Finish what you were saying, though. I was listening. I was I was did listening. Did you experience that same situation as Matthew McConaughey did in the movie Coop, like where he was in that library with the books and all that shit and all that? Was it like that? <laughs> exactly like that. 
Uh, Except no, I was just, Matthew McConaughey in that scene, and I was like, "Don't leave, don't leave, Merv, Alex, yeah. don't leave, Ron, don't leave, Ron." <laughs> to put it blankly, I feel that Nolan could have cut the scene a little bit and moved the story on a little more faster. I think it was just a little too extended this whole sequence, and that was my overall thoughts on that sequence. Okay, well, you know what? I mean, that's fair. You know, um, <clears throat> I. I personally think it. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a. Um, it wasn't a bad scene. I think it was kind of important to the scene. It might have been boring because it it uh, had some. It didn't have like a total suspense in it. Well, I mean, it had a little bit. Like Renee was saying, with like the the wave, and then they had the Hans Zimmer music. The bang. And one of the astronauts got killed. One astronauts got killed. I mean, it was a quick. Ex- Exciting part of it, and then there was some. Um, damn, I, I just cannot think of the right words all the time. There was some it consequences. Was, that, was mm-hmm. that was Doyle that that died. I think at that point, that was actually Doyle, and that was believe it or not, at that time, you had I hadn't seen him in a long time in the movie when this came out. Um, that was Wes Bentley, who actually was um, like a breakout, almost like sleeper breakout in um, a in, um, what do you call it? Um, um, that 2001 Kevin Spacey. I just remember him, out. and all I remember him from is uh, American Horror Story. That's all I remember him from. Uh, no, nah, he was his first ever, his first role ever was um was American Beauty with Annette Bening and Kevin Spacey that won the Oscar. Yeah, the, the, I remember the, him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember. But and that yeah. going back to that scene before we leave it, I mean there was consequences to that scene. There was. Uh, extra time they had to to stay there when, when she decided not to um to get into the ship quicker because she wanted to go after the, retrieve the data. You know that that caused them to be there longer. By the time they got back and they got out of there, it was twenty four years. Twenty four years. Remember, he's thinking about his daughter going back. 20- yeah, twenty three mm-hmm. years, and what's his name? Um, that stayed Romley, that stayed on the ship, aged the whole twenty three years when they came mm-hmm. on. He, they... Yeah, I mean, that that idea is wild. Imagine being that guy, Renee, waiting there. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, the time that he had to spend by himself and just you know. He did say that he went under a couple of times, but, you know, I think he was mostly awake. And, but he was studying. He was a scientist, and he was studying the black hole that whole time. And, and he, what he learned during that time is what they were then able to do to, to figure out how they're going to survive this. Yeah. So um, there was a very, and, and very good scene where, where they get back on the ship and on their, after being almost drowned. And uh, Coop says, well, why in the world was the um, Miller's, um, why was her ship still there? You know, why hadn't it been spread out? You know, Yeah, they he got said, here so long then, ago. Right. And Hathaway said, no, it, for her, it was just a few minutes ago. That's you know, it had wild. Just happened. It had just happened. And that's wild, yeah. right? The, yeah. When they yeah, explain exactly. that? <laughs> yeah. That's just mind-blowing. Yeah. Then the uh, cyber... I see you, Cyber. Oh, on tight. Bless Thank you, Thank you. They go to that... Uh, how did they decide to pick that one planet? Do you remember Remember they had a choice? Because there was two planets left. I think... Well, basically, what ended up happening is ha- they figured out which one would be easier to get to going around Gargantua because they came across the whole slingshot idea. Mm-hmm. And so that's how they <laughs> discovered which one they could go to. Plus, plus, man, it was manipulating the data. Yeah. So, okay. So then, light. yeah. Well, then next they went to man's planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, he, he put out a distress call. Uh. Well, no, it wasn't a distress call. It was a. Uh, it was a beacon saying that they had, um, that it was a potential for for life to well, that's what I mean, there. Yeah. He had put out a beacon. Right. Yeah. With, the, with the false information that. With the false information, right? Yeah. They get there and then. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember. Is this where you find the plot twist where, like, they, uh, the scientists lied about that they would never, there was never a plan B? Remember that part? There's a plan A and a plan B? I think that comes a little later. Um, that comes after, that comes after man's planet. 
Okay. After but, they come back from but that, man, yeah. but man was there. So I get. I think why they're during while they're in that planet is when it happens because he was there and he was like, uh, "Do you know what he's?" You're talking right. About? You're right. Yeah. He yeah, says I, there was no plan B. There was no plan B. There was always a plan A. Mm-hmm. You know, but he knew that if he told you that he couldn't get you to, you know, be at your fullest potential to, you know, do the things that need to be done that are necessary, you know, because we get held back by, you know, sentiments and stuff like that. Well, uh, well um, she um, one of the one of the reasons not only it would be easier for him to get that they could get to man's planet faster um but if they went to the Edmunds, I think it's Edmunds planet, that one, they would have taken them longer, but it they was further out that. from the singularity. So it wouldn't have meant that meant that much more. They wouldn't lose more time. In other well, words, he it, wouldn't. The, the yeah. thing, the thing that he was thinking about is that he wouldn't be able to get back home. Right. Yeah. He was wanting to get back home before his kids died. Basically. Right. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So he, the, was, of old age. he was thinking of that. And then he used the, uh, the fact that, um, the doctor had a thing for Edmund Mm -hmm. and that's why they shouldn't go there because he was, she was being biased. Well, she was letting her heart lead. lead. She was saying, no, I'm not making a rational decision. I'm letting my heart make this decision. I feel like that if we go to it, you know, I feel this, this, and that was another theme that carries throughout the movie. This, how does love, you know, does love, you know, does love transcend all? Can it transcend time, space and gravity? You know, so that's that was one of that, and she said, "No, I'm gonna. I feel this love pulling me to Edmund's plan. I think that's the answer. I think we'll find, we'll find it there." But then the rational decision, of course, is to do the, to go the fastest way, you know, right, and and whatnot. And and McConaughey, even though he, he wants to do it, but even so, he, his heart pulls him to it to to do the. But then he says the rational, fast, the best thing is to go to man's planet. So right. yeah. Yep. At the end, when he's in the when he's in the um the tesseract, he says something along the lines of, love, this proves that love is quantifiable." Right? You know yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's actually, a yeah, factual, exactly. like, valid concept. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That is that is instrumental. You know what I mean? Like right. a necessary. Like and that's, in the human, that's the key to the movie, right there. Yes. Yeah, that you is, know it's, it's, it's one of the keys. I feel like there's several. I mean, you know what I'm saying, Ronnie? Honestly, I feel like mm-hmm. there's several points that they're trying to make. Mm-hmm. By the end, you know what I mean. I don't think it's just about love and the family. I think that there's several different, you know, like things they're trying to they're good, trying to get across. Um, you know, yeah. the brother, well, you know, the the daughters. Well, I think the main, the main one I have to agree with Renee on this one is love because, um, it was his love for his daughter that was the connection, and that's mm-hmm. what ultimately you know led him back to wanting to go back to his daughter to see his daughter that mm-hmm. was yeah. that was the reason for him going through the black hole because he realizes once he's in the tazerac he, he realizes later that he's in control of the tazerac even though it's a structure that the, the aliens or whoever had provided for them um he doesn't understand it but he realizes well, he, knew. he realizes he right. can control it yeah. yeah he knew he knew that those were human beings at that point he knew that those were an advanced race of human beings that had designed all this and whatnot he had gathered yeah, but they didn't know who i mean we still don't know who that alien race was at, the, at one point they don't know who they are and and they doesn't really tell you either there's only that one point where he's when he's in the black hole that he's talking to tars i believe it's tars mm-hmm. yeah right tars. And oh, by the way, those robots are awesome. I really like the robots. I love them. <laughs> I do yeah. too. I, I enjoyed them. You know, um, <clears throat> when he's in in the the black hole and he's uh, he's in that he he doesn't understand. He even said it, they make it you know easy to understand for us as a viewer to explain it. They explain a lot of things for the viewer in this movie, mm-hmm. which is great. You know, um, you know he's like I don't understand what is this. He goes. This is a uh, a simulated version of time and space through your da- your daughter's room. All the all the times and instances, you know, um, where you can communicate. They're trying to communicate to your daughter, but they don't know how, you know. And he's like, "Well, I know how with love, you know. Gravity is the only thing that that, that transcends oh, yeah. everything." J. Ren, that that part of the scene for me really made it for me. The fact that Tars was there, and that that was who the last person was or the last you know entity was for for coop to talk to 
at that point to go back and forth with and whatnot it happened to be Tars. That that was the the connection. That was the dynamic that they they flushed out at the end was to have Tars survive and be able to still communicate with him in the black hole and whatnot and everything in the Tesseract. Yeah. I loved that back and forth. I loved that. I loved that. That I guess that conversation or whatever and that back and forth where um, you know in a way Coop is trying to explain to a robot. You know what I mean? Like what the hell's going on? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know, that, that that you know something that to the robot was not logical. Um, right. And Tars was voiced by Bill Irwin. Um, and um, honestly, um, I think it's uh, important to point out before we get too far ahead towards the end of the film that the, overall this isn't just a great film, but it was great casting, mm-hmm. really great casting. Um, down to like the minutia. Even the smaller roles are played. Even the smaller parts are really well played by like really well played actors um, and actresses. And um, who they came up with and whatnot to go ahead and like put together for this whole cast. It was. It's. I wouldn't say it's like an ensemble necessarily. It's not to that degree, but it's a solid like cast that works well together and whatnot. And it work. It works in the film. Yeah, I'm gonna pause you there. So uh, there's a good question here uh, on jo- John. What's up, John? Uh, and Renee, I'm gonna have. I think you can answer this one pretty good. Let's see. So he has a question. It says, do you consider that movie a science fiction movie or a practical science? Is real science, is it even possible? Yes. It's, um, this, is, this is a genre. This is a science fiction genre that's called hardcore science fiction. And um, it's not possible now all this, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastical thinking, but, but it's all based in real, in real science. In other words, they're not, they're not bringing in a, a do ex machina, you know, bringing God or something like that in. Yeah. Okay. Possibly there is an advance, you know, this possibility that there's an advanced race of aliens out there that know this technology. We know black holes exist. We know time deletion exists. We, we know we can get to, um, we know that, the, um, the, by the Rosenbridge Podolsky theory of of, of uh, t- time tunnels or a uh, black hole, what 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 do you call them? The wormhole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they know wormholes are that's the, they're theoretically possible. So everything's based on theory that's actually out there. That's actually being worked on by theoretical physicists and astrophysicists and. Um, uh, uh, interesting note that this movie was made in 2014 and 2012, the Large Hydrogen Collider at CERN in Switzerland hit the lowest, they hit what's called the, the Higgs boson. That's the, the, they think at this point that is the fundamental building block. That was the first particle that came out of when the black hole, when the Big Bang event happened, that would have been the first particle that came out that that um, begin to solidify. And then from that, all other particles evolved. And so, and then evolved and then changed and then changed and then became, st- eventually became stellar matter, gas and whatnot, and would shrink down to almost singularities, burst out again, throwing all that star matter out. As you know, we looked at wonderful, um, uh, the satellites, the, the space telescopes that we have up there, the Kepler and the new one that's out there now and the Hubble, all those beautiful, you know, that's, of course, they're, they're adding the color and stuff into it, but that stuff is out there. Absolutely. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah this is a, a hardcore science fiction, still science fiction movie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's kind of amazing, like, Right now, they're doing, you know, with this telescope that's taking all these, like, real interstellar pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, what is it? Ar- Artemides? Artemides 1? Artemis? Artemis, Artemis, Artemis 1? Yeah. Going mm-hmm. to the moon? Some mm-hmm. say we're, you know, it's the first time we're going to the moon. You well, know? no. <laughs> we went to the moon. <laughs> but did In we, 1968. Though? But did we, though? <laughs> Well, let's not get too a deep dive into that, but the empirical I'm do data. I want to do a whole podcast the empir- about that. The, well, absolutely, but the <laughs> empirical data is far, far humongously um, on the side that we went there. The evidence that we did not go there is on is at zero. So, so why is it taking us fifty <laughs> years to go back? Money, 
Really? Politics. Oh yeah, we what, had a lot. What, you know. How come we can't go? How come we're having all these issues going back? Money and, with and these rockets? politics. <laughs> I'm sorry. And with these rockets, you would think the technology would be. Yeah, well, of course, we've been sending stuff to Mars. We've been sending. I mean, in, the, have we in the meantime, in the meantime, we've been doing all kinds of. I'm not going to argue with have we though because you get into <laughs> that's another that's a black hole. Yeah, you fall into a black hole talking about that stuff. Now, if you want to do a science show, we'll do a science show. For right sure. now, we're talking about science fiction and absolutely that we didn't go to the moon is science fiction. Oh, I would love to talk about that. I just thought I'd bring that up real <laughs> quick since we're in the realm. Little, no, I'll tell you this. You know, you know that the thing that was killed me back when 9/11 happened. They flew the planes into the. Um, World Trade Center and Pentagon and whatnot, mm. and horrible event. But the thing, oh, oh science, cause, you know, because it was based in this Islamic terrorism, religion, uh, an irrational belief system. Um, they would say, oh, the, then the, the, the elite, the smarty pants people, they would say, oh, well, science, we fly buildings, we fly rockets to the moon. We don't fly them into buildings. And But I can't say, no, wait a minute. The V-2 rocket, which was the beginnings of the Saturn V rocket, which took people to the moon, flew into buildings in London. That's what they were designed for. And the man, and oh, you, I bet you love Pop Operation Paperclip, uh, Jay Rant. Um, I know a little that's bit. When they, I know a little bit about it. Yeah, that's where they got Werner von Braun. That's the man that was the from father. Germany? Of, of, yeah, from Germany. He was the number one on the we need this guy now list. And they certainly got him. And of course he made every effort in the world to get to the United States. You know, you know, he wanted to get to the Americans before either the Germans killed him or the Russians got him and took him back to Russia. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So that's the man who took us to the moon is very controversial. Yes. He was a Nazi. He was a member of the SS. He was also a brilliant man. And without him, we wouldn't have gone to the moon. So yeah. anyway, no, no. Yeah. A lot of, a <laughs> lot of good information. <laughs> Jared 2000, back to, back to Interstellar, brother. Back to Interstellar. Yes, sir. Gotta, I'm sorry about that. Thank you, Jeff, for bringing me <laughs> back. Uh, Talk about sex, Jack. <laughs> no, no. Uh, like, uh, you know, that's, I mean, that's the thing. Like, uh, honestly, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, there are things I could bring up. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, when um, when the one guy was sitting there on the, like, for 23 years at the space station with TARS and, like, um, the other robot, I wonder if he was, like, you know, having sexual relations with that, with that possibly you know what i mean you never know yeah who knows <laughs> but, um, but either way so just uh, just make just case, case that I, you didn't have anything to say about it yeah in case the other guys the other robot said was case i just wanted to make it clear that i can always connect something thanks for the <laughs> ad jeff but uh no um the when, it, when you think about the casting this is actually interesting because this time period with matthew mcconaughey he just come off mud right which was almost like his breakout performance after he kind of like had had a kind of a rough couple of years where he'd been in some flops, you know, and like his, you know, his acting itself had been who? questioned to something like that. Who? McConaughey. Who are you talking about? <laughs> McConaughey had just came huh? off of winning, winning an Oscar for <laughs> Di Dallas <laughs> Buyers Club, during, sir. During your, during your, oh, yeah. uh, well, when, when, your when was remission it? period, Jeff. When was, when Go was, take another uh, smoke break, Jeff. When did he, when did, when did, um, uh, 2013, that, 2013 was when that film came out. Yeah. Okay. So he broke out, that, he broke out that, and that was a great movie. I love that movie. I've watched uh, it many times. Um, I mean, he's been on a, a lot of great movies. Oh my God. He's been around hold for on, a long hold time. On, hold on. I just got it. I got the time you off. Need, a you need bit. to look. Yeah. You need to look at. Hold on. No, no. <laughs> Cyber, will, Cyber will ruin me on this. He did go through a period there before he won that Oscar where he was not being approached for big roles and whatnot in serious films or anything like that for a while there and whatnot. He was basically being almost viewed as only capable of being in romantic comedies and things of that nature. Like there was that kind of viewpoint with him. He proved that he could do that, that he could act at that point and whatnot. And then he did true detective, which I think was a masterpiece. Um, you know, at the same time that, you know, before interstellar came out, he did true detective and that was great. I need to look that at his movies movie. now. I need to see a list of his movies and, and go through that. Because, yeah, I know he's been into some romantic comedies for sure, but. And the, from like 2003 to like 2010, yes. he was typecast. 
yes. for romantic comedy films because he did uh, ten, how, uh, how to Get Rid of a Guy in 10 Days oh, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, wedding good, good movie. Good movie. And stuff like that. Um, and he was. He was typecast because he even came out in an interview stating that he had been typecast. And so when he realized that he needed to change his, you know, basically the type of films he was doing, that's when he really started getting into doing some other types of films. Even though back in the early night or mid nineties, he did do a Time to Kill, which was a really fantastic film. He that did that too. Him. He did Amistad too. Remember Cyber? Yeah. He did Amistad. He did that and in that ninety seven too. Great film too. Yeah, he did uh, those back to back actually. Ninety six and ninety seven. He, he was on Wolf of Wall Street. No. Yes. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah. But no, a, but a that time was to, just, yeah, that was later. A Time to Kill, I think, was even nominated for an Oscar for Best Picture, I think, or whatever, whatnot that year. It I was think. nominated. I mean, yes. Yeah, it was a good film. And of course, um, Days and Confused really was his beginning point. Yes. That's where that whole, you know, right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right came from. That's what that phrase that's, came that's from. That's a classic movie, man. I haven't seen that in a while. Uh, but yeah, he did have a short typecasting period in the early 2000s before he got Interstellar, Dallas Spiders Club. And the, some of those movies he did right around that time that were a little more serious. And that's when he started to pivot himself because he uh, he also did Failure to Launch in 2005 or 2006, I should say, which was another romantic comedy. And so, yeah, he he was typecast for a little bit, uh, a okay. little while there. I'm okay. telling you folks. But I wouldn't say weren't... it was a slump or in bad movies. They These weren't bad movies. No, it was it's not as, uh, but he I'm wasn't is, getting but i see what you're saying he wasn't getting the big parts like like no, the other actors what, of his right. stature were getting at that time. yes yeah. right he wasn't right. he wasn't um right. he wasn't he wasn't playing he wasn't uh, he, no he wasn't being asked to be in real oh. impact dramatic films he wasn't you getting the Tom cruise parts in other words yeah i mean if yeah, you watch the first, <laughs> if you watch the first season of true detective i'm telling you him and woody harrelson together as uh-huh. partners as cops are unbelievable together. Oh yeah, it's really good, very good. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, but no. Besides that, um, I love Damon in this film as a villain, as like a sinister character. You never see Matt Damon play roles like that. Mm-mm. It was interesting to see him kind of like have that you know type of role. I, I thought he was great in it. And even if you also look at like you know in consideration, um, you know, um, what's going on, Drunk Wizard? Um, Anne Hathaway at that point was um like pretty popular she was kind of like really hitting her stride you know what i mean like you know um dig the short a, hair a, oh yeah she had done already done the, the yeah she was hot, and all she was hot with the short hair she did yeah. yeah the short hair was nice i liked it, it yeah it fit her she didn't wear any makeup either if you know she looks and when she she looks a lot you probably don't even know what i'm talking about but she looks a lot like liza minnelli i think <laughs> I just kept seeing Liza with the short sure? hair and the big eyes and a little little turned up nose. I kept thinking Liza, but anyway. <laughs> she showed her in, um, in Brokeback Mountain. They're nice. Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she's in that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's a good actress. She's a very good actress. I'm sorry, you know, I know she, guys. I don't know any of the actors in Brokeback Mountain. I <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that <laughs> was the one. It's, yeah, not, it's not a movie that I choose the, chose to see. No yeah, one. I heard you guys about. made your own version of uh, Rope Bat Mountain, like your own independent private one. I bet you have a movie that you've made <laughs> that would replicate Rope Bat Mountain, Jeff, in your collection somewhere. <laughs> it's called Swayback oh, Valley. I guess so. <laughs> he said, "I guess so." I, I might. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, to tell you the truth, I'm working on a special artistic project right now where I'm trying to put together like a blowjob compilation. Oh, like, wow. you know, so- oh, God. Here we go again. Here we go again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, what about McConaughey doing this? I'd rather doing talk about Magic to- Mike. Oh, my God. But, uh, <laughs> I thought time, he was going to pull that G string off at the end. No, but uh, <laughs> just, at the same time, uh, with, if you look at with Jessica Chastain, she was a get for them too to book to pull her in for Interstellar because she was super popular. Like at that point, she had just broken out in the last two two years or so, I believe. Right, Cyber, uh, with the help and everything and whatnot and all that uh, had just come out within the last couple of years. Who? Chastain hadn't she basically just broke out within like two or three years before Interstellar? 
No, I mean, she was kind of becoming popular, you know, late 2000s, early 2010s. Uh, she actually had a few other films before this that were pretty popular. So, the I mean, she's she already kind of, she was in The Help, yeah, 2011. Uh, so, I mean, but there was a few other films that she was known for before that, too, as well. Uh, but I think what really, what really propelled her was, was, uh, uh, you know, films like Molly's Game, which she did a couple years mm-hmm. later, and stuff like that. So I think that she was already on the rise when she did Interstellar. Uh, she just was, you know, still waiting to kind of peak. Was she in Looper? I never saw that. It's a good movie. I don't remember either. But hey, anyway, going back, because now I'm getting the hit in the comments here that uh, we got sidetracked. From Interstellar. Yep. Yes, we did. Thank you. So let's go back. Liz said that uh, every time she showed up on here, she hasn't heard anything about Interstellar, which I doubt because we haven't been off track that many times. She probably just got on and we were talking about Jeff's collection. And, uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, hey, I, John, I, I, I know we will continue talking about Interstellar. Ho- and, hold on, and, Jeff. And Magic Mike. Yeah, we're, we're done talking about that. Okay, the last I think the last part we left off was. <laughs> Uh, man's planet. Uh, turns out there was a plot twist. You know, he, man tries to to kill him, to off him on that planet, to so he can escape. Then we get to like one of my favorite scenes on that movie, the docking scene. Remember when man he he gets in the ship, mm-hmm. and then he's trying to dock, and he's just not listening. He keeps trying to to dock, and he like fucks everything up, and that part of that ship blows up, the interlock. And that scene with the music, I mean, just masterpiece scene. I mean, five stars out of five stars. I mean, just... And then he goes and he's having to turn the ship to match the speed. And then if he doesn't match it, then uh, he was like... Uh, <clears throat> He's like it's an he goes it's a necessity like he that like there, there's no choice it's impossible but it has to be done in order to save the human race in other words and that's one of the cool things about him as a pilot is that he has the, he he does everything old school like he believes in the man, in manually docking and things like that and whatnot like that's one of the things that makes him unique as a pilot he's kind of a wild card like an old fashioned pilot mm-hmm. yeah stick and rotor man yeah um and, uh, another and talking about why this would be uh, uh considered the what i said hard for science fiction if you notice whenever there are any explosions in outer space you hear no sound because there's no there's no medium for for sound waves to travel in in a, you know outside of an atmosphere so you know you're not going to hear you might hear reverberations inside the ship from you know from from the pressure or whatever impact but you're not going to have a microphone out there hearing an explosion. That's a good anything. point. That's a good point because when they show the explosion, the explosion mm-hmm. it's all silent. It's all silent. It's all silent. And very effective. Very effective. Very true. Very true. Cyber. Yes. How are you doing? Good. Excellent. I'm good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, what was this scene boring to you? Tell me it wasn't boring. No. No, this was one of the this like. Like I said, after it got done with the ocean sequence, the ocean planet, that's when it really started to pick up, and it was a lot more interesting for me. So I absolutely loved this scene. I thought it was really well done. I loved the explosion. I loved the whole you know twist plot, plot twist as you want to call it, uh, with man being you know he him setting this all up so that they come and rescue him and all that kind of stuff, and then ends up you know he ends up with you know within like I think it was like. I swear to God, like 20 minutes, one person gets killed, he gets killed, and it's pretty much just Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway by that point uh, left, you know, and it just was a really great just action sequence that was really uh, fun and, and really relifted the film for me to keep me wanting to watch more. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Jeff, did you stay awake to this part of the movie? Yeah, I mean, um, I think that I get where Cyber's coming from. I do with the whole water planet scene with Miller's planet and whatnot and everything. I did enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. 
but it, if there is one part of the film that is kind of like a a stall, like almost like a neutral period or whatever, where things kind of get a little, eh, you know, for a minute and slow down and kind of get a little boring. That is what that would be one spot where it, it's kind of it's kind of uneventful, unimpactful, really. Even when Doyle dies, it does it doesn't happen or occur in a way that's really impactful or remarkable. It's almost it's like instant, and he's gone. He's swept away or whatever. You know what I mean? So. There's no real impact or like any emotional, you know, connection to it or to the death at all. Um, you know what I mean? Um, but at that point, I do feel like though that they did a great job of um, piecing together this story across the film in a way that worked, like from sa- from scene to scene and whatnot, and, and and was fluid, even if there was that dip here or there. Overall. The, the film works across the span of the whole film. It's it's entertaining. It makes sense. It's logical. There's nothing stupid going on that you know, it makes no sense or whatever. And it does continue in a in a in a it evolves into a in a positive direction. It gets better as the film gets better. It builds suspense. For sure. Right? For um, sure. And know? there's some emotion yeah. in it too. Like they, they oh yeah they build yeah. like a emotion. And just to rewind back a little bit because thinking about it you remember when they uh that water planet when they got back on the ship and they know uh he went to see all his uh videos that were sent to him yep and then mm-hmm. you know he sees his son older now he's married and he's like hey look yep. this is this is your grand your grandson and then they show his daughter she's older and she's upset and he's just like they're bawling yep. like gets you the, you know almost sentimental you almost feel for him in the movie that's how good a job they did his, his son has become trans he's a woman now he's a trans woman yeah. What well, did you notice? That was the that was a kind of a heavy set Casey Affleck that played the older, the older version of the son. What Jeffrey? You're right. Yeah. All right. What's going on? Shenanigans. Shenanigans in the chat. She said, "What the heck did you do to renew?" I don't know what that means. Oh, what what did I do to Renee? I didn't do anything to Renee. That's just her picture. <laughs> She, no, but that was. Go ahead, Joy. Oh, I was just trying to explain to shenanigans in the. Well, don't know what happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah just... I guess she's talking about the picture. I don't. Know. Oh yeah, she goes. She's a skeleton. That's, that's actually that's not me. That's Lady Death Lady. Yeah, that's Lady Death. She's Lady Lady Death Lady. You don't get to see what she looks like. We're we are, we are not we are not blessed. When you're a frequent guest on the bleeding edge, you got to remain anonymous at some point, just to even <laughs> connect it to us. You know what I mean? Yeah, Renee, do you have a camera, or you don't use one? Yeah, I have a camera, and I don't use one. Why not? That's my choice. Okay. Would you ever consider using one? Probably not. No. Mm. I mean, okay. I would show my face to you guys privately, but but not on not on YouTube. No, no way, no how. Well, that's a good she's, thing we're not on YouTube. Well, I, whatever, whatever you're on. <laughs> she's too focused on using her camera for her private stuff, her private yeah. videos, like me. You know what I mean? So, yeah. well, I like, I like, I'm a nudist, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, well, no wonder you and Jeff are Cyber friends. Froze again. <laughs> I don't think you. I, I don't think you froze. That's not the internet freezing. That was just him for when you said that. I don't I think I think Cyber just got a little too high. Cyber? Cyber get a little too high. Cyber's Cyber Cyber's one of the most sober motherfuckers you're gonna meet. And so am I. He's just high on life. And Jeff what is Jeff high on? What am I not high? I mean, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) I mean not uh, I'm very consistent like with what I take. I mean, you know, I don't, I, I'm very all natural. I drink alcohol and I smoke weed. So, you know, besides that, I don't fuck with anything else. Well, that's good for you. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I'm not into the hard stuff. That's the, that's the good stuff. You mean, I'm just kidding. Nah, I'm not into all that. <laughs> good, good. Um, all right. So now we've already passed the point where, um, they docked, and now there's a choice that has to be made here on how they can get to the last planet. And 
this will go back to a part where you know he was checking the settings with the robot about the honesty levels they can adjust the honesty and humor levels tars tars that was pretty cool then he has this idea that they were gonna this is where they we talked about sling slingshotting around gargantua yeah they were gonna use the re, the remaining fuel from the uh, smaller jets or the smaller ships to help push it to sl- slingshot it so that way they can get pushed out of the gra- gravitational pull so they can get to the final planet. And one of the things he doesn't tell Anne Hathaway or um, what's her name? Amelia. 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 Is how they're going to get there. And during that whole scene, you know, again, the, the beautiful music you know, the rockets, he turns on one rocket, it gives them that small boost, then they turn off that second rocket. The first rocket, what, gets them around it, right? Slingshots them with the first rocket. Then the second ship is the initial rocket to push them. I want say slingshot, that second rocket pushes them out of the gravitational pull. But in the only way they could really do that is they had to lose weight, and he doesn't tell her that part, and that's when those ships release, come off. And then that put is it like basically slingshots her, launches her out of the gravitational pull. That's mm-hmm. when he goes in the black hole. We covered the tesseract, him falling in the tesseract, finding the information, the the data they needed. Found the data. Mm-hmm. Was able to go into the rooms. Love, like Renee said, was probably like the main thing, the kind of the theme of it. Um, he was able to communicate with his daughter because he had such a good love. Uh, the bond of love is what uh, was able to transcend everything because, like, the watch was, you know, he was like, uh, she'll look at the watch, and he, she, he was like, why? How do you know? And he's all, because I gave it to her. And then they go back to that, you know, that moment of all those times. And it was, it was, it was beautiful. I wonder what would have happened if, like, the guy, if the, if the father had been a deadbeat father in that situation. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a piece of shit. And this movie would not have turned out the same. No, it wouldn't have even gotten made. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely would have not. Yeah. No, but, um, uh, J Rant, um, honestly, um, I think at that point, too, they, I, I, I want to say that you guys tell me, I think they do kind of give off the hint that there is, in, this, in the only situation I can think of in the whole film, by that point, when um, when Coop um, you know decides to go ahead and then, um, drop the weight and like you know and 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 you know d- d- jettison himself to like let help um, help her you know um, Amelia held to the planet, I think they do have like a thing going on by then, like there is kind of like a, a, a mm-hmm. like a romantic vibe going on between them like, uh, you know? yeah because they kind of they've been they kind of spent some time together yeah and they you know they both kind of lost something you know people they that bonded. they love it's... they bonded right you know um she's from she's of his time period now yeah the people on this ship but when he comes out of the of gargantuan and out of that wormhole and he's floating and they find him all those people are not of his time period they're they're He's 125, I think is what they said. Mm-hmm. Uh, or as Liz goes, it says in the comments, they went through the mud together. Yes. You know, and so when he gets on the ship, you know, and his daughter is like the big deal, you know, they have her like in sleep, but they're like, you know, oh, whatever she wants, you know, we're going to do for her because she's like basically the one who saved the human race. So she's looked at as like the savior. And, you know, he goes, he sees her, his daughter, who is now like 90 or 80 something years old, dying or on her deathbed with the family. You know, they they don't know who he is. She doesn't. He, you know, he, he knows his daughter and she's like, you know, no, no father should or no parent should have to see their children die, you know. Mm-hmm. And he's like, why don't you know? And he's like, well, I don't know what to do. Then he tells her, no, you, you need to go with her because she's by herself, you know, and she's, you know, all alone and she needs somebody to be with her. And he's like, I think he like accepts the fact that he's kind of lost everything there. 
but like he knows that she had a good life. He sees all that family around her, you know, and she's like, oh, I've lived a good life. I have all my family here with me. You know, I, I've, she accepted the fact that he was gone a long time ago and she moved on and he needs to move on while he is, I guess, still young. Right. Mm -hmm. And that time. Yeah. So then they show him taking off. He, they, they brought him a robot. So that way, you know, cause that was like his friend, his only friend he was going to have probably it was. And yeah, you think about it. That's you know, his Tars own. Went to this, yeah. He was, went through a lot with him. Yeah. Yeah. That and that, crazy. and that, and with him leaving into that ship to go back to meet uh, Amelia, the time is not going to be that much off from when he leaves. Uh -uh. He's going to get there maybe, what, like minutes or an hour later because of that time difference. Right? So it's not like he would, she's going to be much older or anything. And if he's going to be there with her for that time period, his friend is going to be that robot and her. While they're raising all those test tube babies, maybe, maybe they'll have a threesome. The robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other robot in case case is with her. Case is on the on Edmund's planet with her. Is that is that what it was? Oh yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Because if you at the end, case is there digging dirt and doing stuff, helping her. Oh yeah, that's um, right. Which I loved how they are talking about the two, the robots, how they. At first, you just there's just this big slabs of metal with TV screens on them, and uh, then you see how they're put together. They're they're kind of like puzzle piece contraptions, and they can roll like a top, or you know, or use their little forks and like come out as hands. Or it's just it was just very different, very inventive. I mean, but totally different from say like three CPO and stuff like that. Uh, you know the, what we commonly think is a robot, but and it kind of reminded me. I, and there was like a lot of allusions to um, two thousand one in this movie, right? Right. That the, that the monolith that here we have this. They kind of was I think modeled a little bit on the monolith, and then of course the monolith out that circles Jupiter in that movie that is the, I guess one of the first Stargate that was a, actually traveling through a wormhole. Also, Hello, that Dave. Was yeah, yes, yes. It I'm was afraid I can't let you do uh, that, Dave. Yeah, yeah, we'll open the pod bay doors, Hal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Dave. Daisy, Daisy. Anyway. Great that, movie. That, yeah, uh, there again. Um, that's what they're showing there is that Stargate, and, and it's alluding back to that, and kind of going back to the idea of love, and I think this is where it, they bring it home in the, in the film. Um. The love, um, as Jeff said, is a quantifiable thing. You know, love is a quant. It, it is a thing. It is. It, it's. It, it is information, and everything. Um, here again, this is another one of those pop science fiction concepts, and it's well, it's not a concept. It's a fact. Everything is actually information. All energy is information. You know that, that our DNA is information, and that information gets copied and passed on. Yep, gets copied very than ourself, and then we gets copied and passed on generation after generation, and that's um, evolution. Of course, there's biological evolution, which is instincts. Different from, that's where we get our yeah. instincts from. Every we, everything we know everything. what a predator went to right, be afraid. Right. Mm -hmm. All of, all of that stuff. What I'm saying that that's that's information, and that's a real thing, and and um, it is passed on, and it can uh, copy and generate. <laughs> regenerate itself without us even knowing that it's happening so true true liz said she also went to find out the love of her life died when she got there yep mm -hmm. that's true oh my cousin has some important information to say he did say that his mom stood next to the microwave a lot when she was pregnant with him i'm not sure that how that correlates with the no. movie but uh you know he's always Bringing that useful information, thank you. Maybe that's why you ask those kind of questions whenever you show up. I'm sure. I'm sure the multiverse of madness. That's probably valuable. <laughs> well, somebody said there's never a stupid question, but oh, the saying is there's no such thing as a stupid question. Only stupid people. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. I think RUI R- birth control is one of those ones that you really got to make sure that you put in there. You know what I mean? Very important. Mm-hmm. Are you? I mean, I'm infertile, so I don't need, I don't need birth oh, control. Oh, okay. Well, either. then you got it taken care of. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have any information to fucking uh, to spread or whatever. But not a, my shit's dead. No, it's just going to be disease now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> That's information, too. Cyber, what do you rate this movie out of five stars? I give it a solid three. Ooh. Oh, man. Ooh, oh. Right in the middle. A little low <laughs> for my taste. That's okay, though. Yeah, well, that's, that's okay. Renee, I'll ask you. Uh, well, I'm going to get four stars. Um, and that's actually high because I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very hard very strict on movies i mean I, I probably only have a handful of tens in my life um so if if this were going if this were the internet movie database rating 10 stars i would say it's a nine but in this case i i'll give it a, a 4.5 okay 4.5 okay so they're just something didn't make it perfect i i can understand you know well it's it, it's not that it's just um yeah, well, I mean, there was I can't see any faults or flaws in the movie other than um, there was one tiny scene where um, the, the, who was the the um, astronaut with the beard that had stayed on the ship? Um, what was his name? Anyway, we just talked about him. The one, yeah, for twenty three years. Yeah. What was the name of that? That uh, I can't think of the character's name. Who was Miller? Miller was one of the astronauts. Romley, 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 Romley. Um, where he's explaining the, the the wormhole concept to McConaughey using with the like paper. We've, all, we've seen it. Yeah, we've seen it a thousand times. You know, certainly classroom. Why not? I'm pretty sure Matthew McConaughey knows all that information. Being an astronaut, an astronaut and an yeah, astro, and an astro, he he would not have to have that concept explained to him. So. So simply, so. you know. But but the 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 they, but it was they, for the, yeah. But it was, but it was for the audience. That's Correct. that's why they did that. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't for them to explain to us the simpletons over here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Oh, I get it. Now, you know, help mm-hmm. help help me, your average Joey, to understand that. So, see, I um, thought that was like I thought that was an explanation of how I could somehow manage to have sex with two women at the same time with a like, pencil, with one shot, you know what and I mean? one piece of paper and a pencil. <laughs> Spooky very action good, at a distance. Very good, Jeff. Okay, so four point five. We got a a three. Jeff, what's your rating? Well, I'm gonna give it a four point seven five out of five, and okay. that's actually fuck that's it. We're actually, just making now. We're just breaking all the kinds of numbers up, right? Yeah, four point seven five. All right, and that is actually a full three it's inches, uh, a full three <laughs> inches bigger. Then uh, my erect penis, uh, you know, is in size of 4.75 inches. So, no, I'm just joking. Uh, but no, I'm going to give it a 4.75 <laughs> out of 5. I prefer I doing... Can... I, I'd prefer... Um, I'd prefer to do out of, out of, a, like out of 10 scale. But um, if I'm going to do a 5, I'll do a 4.75. It's not a perfect film, but it's a really solid film. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's uh, definitely well done. And definitely... Um, <laughs> Make you think quite a bit, you know. It's got a lot of different, like you know, concepts going on and whatnot. It's very interesting, um, and uh, you know, again, I mean, it, it flushes out a lot of different interesting concepts and whatnot. It's a very well done movie. A lot of great visuals, you know. We only we only really highlighted that a couple times, but like the visuals are outstanding, amazing. Um, yep the um the actual scenes of space travel, of of like launching, you know, the shuttle docking with you know initially with um with the initial spaceship um the you know the different um navigation and whatnot of like you know the different shuttles and whatnot and space travel i thought those scenes were all well done they all seemed very like you know authentic and whatnot to me um and um overall again like i said um well cast movie and um just uh, overall um the nolan brothers just killed it with this movie Absolutely. I think it would be a really good when you think about it, it's kind of a loose trilogy. 
if you do Inception and Tenet, if you would watch, it's like do a do a, a marathon where you sit down and watch all three movies back to back over a couple of days or something. I think that would be interesting to do. Absolutely, for sure. Just get all these type of. Because he's dealing ideas. with all these weird interdimensional concepts and whatnot. All right, so I'm going to tell you why I'm going to give it the highest rating out of all of you guys here. I mean, not not the fact that I said at the very beginning that this was one of my favorites, but there's four things that I that are excellent here. The first one is the acting. Second one, which is good. The second is the story. Third is the imagery. And fourth is the music. Mm-hmm. It's got all of those things in there. And because all of those things are connected perfectly, I mean, I, I can't complain with the movie. You know, may, maybe the ending, they could have done maybe a little bit more. But, uh, I mean, you got to be happy with, with all of that other stuff. You know, there's some, uh, to me, there was a lot of suspense, a lot of great scenes, emotion involved. Um, I mean... I left that movie like satisfied when I remember seeing it. I was like, <laughs> you know, one of the slow claps, but you know, th- those are my reasons why I think that it deserves a five star movie, five star review. And you know what? J J rent. They, the budget on this was 165 million. Honestly, yeah. that, I mean, that is a lot of money, but when you think when you think about what they put out in this movie, two hours and forty minutes or whatever of, of the visuals that they put out, and whatnot, mm-hmm. uh, I think that that's actually surprising that it, that it's that low, and it did do seven hundred and point one seven hundred one point eight million worldwide box office, so it was successful financially. Absolutely, for sure. I mean, the uh, I, I wish I'll have to, again. I will say this every single time. Got to figure out how to play the trailers, but the original. I remember. I remember I was hyped about seeing this because I remember the original trailer that they played for this movie and it had so many like flashbacks of like when we went to the moon, they, they, they did flashbacks of like older clips of like different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and they made it really appealing to want to see from the original trailer. I, I would recommend you go look for the original trailer to Interstar- interstellar, the first trailer, trailer one. And then tell me what you think after, like, if, tell me you didn't want to see the movie after that first trailer. But um, <clears throat> John, he says, do you think there'll be a sequel to that movie? No, I don't think there will be a sequel to that movie. There's no need to do a sequel to it. It's a uh, standalone movie. Um, and Elizabeth, yes, that's why I wanted you to mod it, because I am, uh, you know, technically incapable of getting things to work when I am streaming. Yeah, you gotta jump in. Um, if you like this type of movie, and you probably are familiar with it, Jay Rand, and that's Ad Astra that came out a few years ago with Brad Pitt. Um, Which one? It's another. It's another. It's called Ad Astra. A D, and then A S T R A. Um, it came out in 2019. It stars uh, Brad Pitt, Tommy Lee Jones, and basically he's. Um, it's another hardcore science fiction, but um, it, it it involves a venture that where Brad Pitt has to go to the moon, and then from the moon he takes the rocket to Mars, and then from Mars he takes the rocket out to Neptune. For for so I won't do a spoiler on it. I I I am familiar yeah. with this movie. I yeah. don't think I've seen it though. I haven't it's, seen it. It's excellent. You, I think you'll really you'll really like it. I, I believe, and and there is a killer moon buggy car chase shootout on the moon nice so. okay i might have to i might have to watch it later hey jeff i noticed you put the trailer on here are you gonna try to play it you want me to play it right now yeah go ahead and play it see what it does yeah, anti-climatic but go ahead you you've got to click on it you've got to select it do you want me to do it okay well i'm surprised you were able yeah, to on. add it on there hold on let's see if it'll play though yeah go ahead and play it this isn't the trailer I was talking about. There's a different one. Oh, he's dreamy. 
You're a well-educated man, cool. And a trained pilot. And an engineer. The world doesn't need any more engineers. Didn't one, one Adam Blaine fill tells that he said he ran out of food. Why did you give me a No, we didn't. Mercy's law. Mercy's law. Maybe something bad will happen. Maybe it's whatever he can happen. Hey Jeff, it's a bit echoing. We must reality. It's echoey? Yeah, you might have to turn the audio down from your computer. Can't help us. Now you need to tell me what you're playing as a same world. We're not meant to save the world. We're meant to leave it. Jeff, look up the Look up the first trailer. Look up the first one. Yeah, auto doubly. That's what it was. Very nice scene right there. Jeffrey, does anybody, yeah. does anybody call you Jeffrey? Yes. Okay. Look up the look up trailer one for Interstellar. I've got it. Put put that one on. No problem. That's the one that people need to see. I'm crying. No, I mean not. he did a really good job. I mean he had snot coming out of the nose. Burr. That's, that's some crying. Hey, he was, he was a, a good actor. Just proved to everybody. Oh yeah, he is a good actor, absolutely. All right, let me let me add it on here. Lower it just a little bit, Jeff. No problem. Oh, echo. Echoing? Yeah. Awesome. But see, look at the difference in this trailer. You saw like that old clip they had on there? Look at these old clips. Because of his speakers, that's why it's echoing. Yeah. Hmm? I know. To reach the stars. To make the unknown known. But do you see how like they play these old clips on the original trailer? We count these moments as our proudest achievements, having fired the imagination of a generation. But we lost our own. Pulls up the port. There you go, Jeff. For the last time. Or perhaps we've just forgotten. That we are still pioneers. That we've barely begun. And that our greatest accomplishments cannot be behind us. Because our destiny lies above us. Do you see the difference in that trailer, though? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was just... Jeff, thank you for playing those trailers. They actually worked. The only thing is, is the audio was atrocious on the stream. And that's just because of the, the speakers, I guess, coming through the mic. For now on, um, when I come on to do the shows, um, I'll make sure that I use my headphones no matter what. That way, if we're going to, if we do, if we need to screen share, screen share the trailers again or whatever or whatnot, we don't have these echo issues or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it uh, <clears throat> it didn't, it looked like it, it worked. So, but the difference in that trailer from the first one you played, uh, for, to the second one, 
You see what I mean? Because that one came out and it had all those old clips and uh, that's what in, enticed me to want to see it. I was like, oh, okay, what's going on here? What's up with this, you know, pioneers, you know, traveling to the stars and then they show like the, you know, Murph and the grandfather. You didn't know it at the time, but Murph and the grandfather holding hands and then they showed the rocket shooting up. I mean, I just, I don't know. I liked it. Yeah, most definitely. Good trailers, great film. Absolutely. We made it to, you know what, guys? This is the longest podcast we've done. This is an hour and 42 minutes. It's almost as long as the actual movie. That's about how long one of my quickies usually are. Okay, Uh Jeff. Sure, buddy. We're only off by an hour and seven. If you're if you're going at an hour and forty two minutes, you're wasting about an hour and thirty minutes of your time. Yeah, I don't know if he's good at foreplay. Hey, (laughs) but uh, might might be very enjoyable. Who knows? Yeah, Jeff. Well, I mean, Jeff's got videos, so. I don't listen. I mean, uh, I don't well, need to. I don't, uh, don't want to see him. <laughs> I don't. I don't need to. I don't need to brag or like or whatever about my game or whatever. At the end of the day, all I'm going to say is that um, I play at essentially the highest level possible. So I mean, it's that it's that simple. If you want to quantify it and boil it down, like that's where I'm at. Like you know, what I'm saying I'm at my, I'm at my sexual peak, and um, I've evolved my game to a place where fucking basically the only way I would not be able to satisfy a woman sexually in the bedroom would be if I just didn't do anything to her at all. Oh. <laughs> I just um, didn't touch her. You know what? Uh, Liz brings up a very good point. She's usually good at pointing out things. She's a pointer outer person. She said there was no fun facts or trivia during this podcast. When and yes, there was none. So if you guys got any fun what? facts, well, no, what? Renee brought up some fun facts and trivia. I, I brought up a tremendous amount. Absolutely. I guess she's referring to me because you oh, know okay. since I was it, but. But yeah, you brought up some very good fun facts. Some of the fun facts that I remember that I didn't know was those videos from the Dust Bowl. Those are actual, you said those were actual uh, videos, right? From people right. from the right. Dust Bowl. So that is a fun fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Liz brought how did the, How did the polling uh, work out, J-Rap? How did the polling uh, work it, out? It was interstellar. It, it was, I had probably double more votes for interstellar. And then the uh, Inception was second. Uh, the at first, it was like kind of tied with all three, but then like I did the poll for um, like on my on my story, and then I did it to um, uh, something else, and it it um <clears throat> it was more interstellar. It was more interstellar. Nothing else came about. I would have liked to have a zillion votes on there, but it didn't happen. I thought maybe. Give it time, uh, brother. Give it yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sign notes about the actors and stuff. We let I don't think Liz watched the podcast because I think we brought up a lot of sign notes about the actors. Yeah, Yeah. you know, Liz, we we watched. I highlighted a bunch of them and whatnot and mentioned their names and you know, all that. What Liz must have been watching another uh podcast, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Honestly, Jay Run, I think she's referring to your little cards you usually have, and you give facts out. That's what she's talking. I know, about. I know, she is, and I didn't. This is a movie that I should have had some uh, cards and facts to bring out because this is a, fa- a favorite movie of mine. But I did not. Um, I think we still talked about Alan, though, without the fun facts. I don't know. All I know is I miss Liz. I have I haven't I have not spent <laughs> enough time with her recently and I miss her. Well we'll she'll be on. I'm gonna try to get a, another show in maybe this week. I'm gonna try. Oh, you gonna sneak one in, a little sneaky shit? Well, you know, I used to do them on Thursdays and I got away yeah, from I that don't... and I've been consistent with you guys on Monday, so I remember uh, that that you when I first met you you were doing the Thursdays. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But <clears throat> Went away from that. Been doing the Mondays with you guys. I would like to try to go back to Thursdays, just so I can create more content. So content. So the content that we do here, it's a live stream content. Not everybody's gonna watch the hour and forty five minute live show later on. They may tune into it or pay attention to it later or listen to it later. Um, but the only way to really entertain everybody is 
got to get the best clips. So, you know, I'll cut out a, every time I find a funny part or informational, I always cut it out and I show you guys, you know, the editing. So let's see what you've been doing a great job. Oh, well, I, pre I appreciate a great that. job. I yep, appreciate that. You have. And, you know, let's see what we can get from from this, you know, segment today and see what I can clip on and send it out into the Internet world and see what sticks and what doesn't, you know. Yeah, all the funny stuff and weird stuff you can put out there, the better. Oh, yeah. You know, every time, though, I put something with Jeff on it, though, it, it seems like it gets banned. So I, I, I stopped doing that. <laughs> no joke. What a surprise. I, I've, I've literally had two that I've posted on TikTok where Jeff talks about his experiences and they get they get muted. And I'm like, are you serious? Out of all these things that I hear on TikTok and social media, this is what gets muted? I was like, okay, whatever. You know what? I'm just going to I'm gonna just look for a different route and, and do that. But, you know, that's a whole other story. Um, guys, I thank you all for being here to do the podcast. You know, I think we did a good job of covering it. I'm sorry I didn't bring hey. up the fun facts, but... I, I want to thank you, if anything, Jay Rent, because for one thing, again, um, I, it's very nice that that um, you appreciate Interstellar at the same level that I do as a film. That's always nice to hear. Um, and I just, as always, I, as I always like to say, um, I love this outlet for me as a content creator, like, you know, in general, not just as your friend and having an opportunity to, to sit here and record with my friends that are all here, people that are, just so you know, people, I do have friends. All these motherfuckers here are my friends. Believe it or not, they like me somehow. I don't know why, but they do. Um, <laughs> at, least they, at least they pretend they do. Um, either way, um, it, I get to come on here and like talk about different stuff, man, other than Marvel and like the MCU. You know what I mean? For a, for a night, you know, and it's fun, man. It's enjoyable. And um, if anything, um, it's sort of like a um, like an outlet for me, you know, kind of like what the podcast of champions used to, you know, be for me in a way. So. You know, it's nice to have something like that to like look forward to on Monday nights. Yeah, absolutely. Renee, thank you for for uh, joining us tonight, and I appreciate some of the facts, fun facts that you brought. To this oh, podcast. you're welcome. They might not have been too. Maybe they weren't that fun for some people. No, it's, <laughs> it's very informational. I like it's it. because you know, look, you know it, it's because I got these. Liz, oh, yeah. oh, okay. my girlfriend got me this, and it's got empty cards and what i've been doing on some of the uh, other shows i've been you know doing some research on google and getting at least 10 of these filled out with different things for movies you know like you know i'll add something another fun fact um if you look at how they did the gargantua the the black hole singularity mm -hmm. with the with the event horizon going around and everything that i think that was the first time it had ever been done like that and it's been copied ever since so really? whoever come up with that concept, that was, um, and a, another fun fact, uh, the, um, technical, um, advisor on this movie was, um, a PhD physicist at Caltech called Kip Thorne. Yeah. And yeah. he is, uh, he was very close friends, very, very close friends with, uh, Stephen Hawking. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. That's right. And, it, and Linda Obstet and him were the ones that actually came up with the premise for Interstellar from Jump. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Good, good information. So they there. collaborated. They collaborated on the film Contact together. They worked out together on Contact. A good movie, right? And another movie that's I don't know if you have you done that one, uh, Jay Ren. I have not, but that's the one with Jodie Foster, right? Mm -hmm. and, Matt, Foster, and Matthew Matthew McConaughey. And Matthew McConaughey. And yeah. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> very, very. He's a sexy priest in this movie. <laughs> that's a, it's such a good movie. It's another good one. And it's like, um, well, this one's more with like aliens, right? Kind of, yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, and she sees the no, dad. no alien. Well, no, we didn't really. The the, the, the uh, like to say the the only really bad guy was just another human. The only <laughs> evil, the only evil part, and he wasn't really evil. He was just fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really, the, the whole the whole story was kind of fucking stupid to be honest with you. Like to tell you the truth, at the end of the movie, like the way it played out, and um. Jodie Foster was like a little underwhelming in that film as far as like her performance. I'll, I'll put it there, put that out there too. I like Jodie Foster. Yeah, no, it was, it was a good movie, and they that that's actually a good one to cover as well. Mm -hmm. 
Good yeah. Thing. I'll write that down. Jodie Foster is one of those actresses where, where depending on the role that you put her in as, as a leading actress, she could be really good. But in other in other films, she's better off as like a secondary actress. I think she's she plays that better um, than she does like as the feature, you know, of the film. You know what I mean? I thought the the <laughs> best, the, but really the guy who just really stole every scene, and that was John Hurt playing that Haddon, the uh, entrepreneur who finance who's financing all this space, the gadget or whatever they build to shoot them off into the wormhole. I forget what the name of it is, but anyway. Yeah, all that ring, uh, that ring thing. Yeah, Yeah, that that ring machine they built, whatever it was called. Hold on, I gotta acknowledge Drunk Wizard. Wizard, I ain't ignoring you, buddy. I'm so sorry. I, I, I try to catch the uh, the comments as they come, and you know, you know, I kind of I gotta acknowledge Liz. You already know that when she speaks. Drunk Drunk Wizard, Drunk Wizard, don't let your alcoholism make you overly emotional, motherfucker. Come on now. So is Nancy Downs, my two faves. What? Jack Sparrow is a great actor, though. Oh, okay. Oh, I get it. You're talking about the actors that you like. Oh, okay. Sorry, my bad. Um, drunk, but- drunk, drunk wizard is so drunk all the time that you never know when he might get emotional on your ass. <laughs> the movie is called Contact. Yes. Didn't we say that, that it was called Contact? We didn't say it mm-hmm. wasn't called Contact. Mm-hmm. Thank you, John, for acknowledging... That it is called contact. Um, <clears throat> Jazz timing is great. Yeah, wait, good. that was a little late on that. <laughs> yes. Um, Cyber, any words of wisdom for us before we bid bid us adieu? Final words of wisdom. Hmm. Well, children out there in the great land of Facebook. Remember, sci-fi is a wonderful and amazing genre that there's so many great sci-fi films. Uh, as Renee quoted earlier, Loki's mom, about Ad Astra, definitely, if you enjoy Interstellar, definitely check out Ad Astra because it is very similar in the context of this film. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones is fantastic in the film. Mm-hmm. But... If you are a sci-fi fan, I recommend many of these films. Uh, Elysium, District 9, very great films. All should check them out. And Interstellar, of course, is a very unique film. Another Christopher Nolan film that is highly regarded. Was nominated and won Best Visual Effects in 2014. And uh, is just a all-around interesting film. If you have not seen it, I definitely, we highly recommend you guys check it out. It's a very, very interesting film. Cyber, thank you so much for that. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for the extra films to give out to the world to consider watching. Jeff, thank you again. Renee, thank you again. And this is the end of the podcast odyssey we will see you guys later see you later